UFC Vegas Fight Club TV. I'm Kyle, your host. Welcome to the podcast. And today we're going to talk about a little bit of a follow-up from the video this weekend regarding Conor McGregor and him coming out and saying, stay ready. Uh, and now there's a little bit of a response from Khabib. We'll get into that. But before I do, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment, get involved. We are always active within the chat uh, and, and the comment section. So get involved. Definitely contribute to the conversation, interact with each other as well, because I'm definitely enjoying the conversation as more and more we dive into fights and people's thoughts on certain situations happening in the UFC. So get involved, subscribe, Fight Club TV. So, like I said, today we're going to be talking about a little bit of a follow-up. Uh, this weekend we did a video on Conor McGregor coming out and saying, uh, stay ready. Now, Khabib has come out a little bit of a follow-up uh, to... Connor and in his Russian accent, and I am not saying it in his Russian accent, he said he posted on Twitter and said, be ready, stay on the line, which I'm assuming he means be ready to stay on the line. So obviously there's banter between the two. The camps have kind of taken shots at each other. Recently, uh, Khabib's head coach has come out and said certain things about Conor McGregor, saying that, you know, he's scared of Khabib. He doesn't want any part of that fight, which is why he's kind of holding out I, uh, on what he's going to do. I actually believe there's, you know, weight to that conversation and, and weight to those statements of him saying that kind of things about Conor McGregor and about his team and if they're interested in a fight with Khabib and are they just kind of looking for other opportunities like the GSP fight, a Pauli Malignaggi fight, whatever else is out there for Conor McGregor besides Ferguson and Nurmagomedov. So in this conver in this in this tweet, you know, he, you know, Conor is obviously taking some shots at in, in a very subtle way. I mean, he's if there's one thing about Connor, he's very, very good with marketing himself, with keeping himself involved in, in, in the conversation. Like we said in the video this past weekend, same kind of thing, you know, UFC 222. He was able to find his way into that conversation by saying he was going to fight Frankie Edgar. Edgar and his team didn't really know anything about that. Then now we're at uh, UFC 223. Obviously, it's a little bit more with the fact that it's two guys that are looking to fight Connor, but he finds his way in again by saying certain things that he's going to be ready for this fight. And I believe that this comment from Khabib is more on the lines of he doesn't believe that Connor is going to be fighting. Or if he does win this fight, if Khabib does go out and win this fight and he is the champion and he's 26 and 0 and he's the champion, he believes that that Connor's just you know get in line, stay on the sidelines. And you're not going to be very active. And his inactivity for Conor McGregor, of course, does not help his cause. I mean, he had the flyweight title. Um, I'm sorry, the featherweight title. He had that for a while. And, uh, you know, then he ended up kind of hijacking that belt when he was looking to move up and, and fight uh, Diaz. And they end up fighting twice. And now he's back and he's going to be fighting, um, you know, he's in the lightweight title, has that title. Now he's kind of hijacking that. Uh, division again. So definitely has people within that division frustrated and Dana White is not backing anything up and saying 100% this fight at UFC 223 is for the lightweight title. End of story. We don't care what Conor McGregor's doing, but Conor McGregor obviously has weight and he and he has uh you know definitely a say in what's going on with him, who he's going to fight and McGregor and Dana White definitely show that they're um, always in communication, always having conversations. So it could be, and somebody did say this today as I was talking to them in the comment section, that possibly there is negotiations. Possibly there is just negotiations going on in this fight. What lion's share of the money is he going to be taking in? What is it, you know, is it the certain percentage of the pay-per-view if he comes back? How much is it going to be just the gross revenue he's going to be creating and obviously on the other side of it is that how much money can the UFC give him that he wants you know to fight and you know he makes a hundred million dollars against Floyd Mayweather and now it's a possibility he could make uh 10 percent of that you know let's let's hypothetically say it's 10 million dollars all in that he could make maybe more I'm not really sure but I would 
arbitrarily say about $10 million for the UFC that he would that he would make from the UFC from a pay-per-view fight with Khabib or Tony Ferguson. But you're asking Connor now to fight a guy in Khabib or Tony that is beasts. They are animals in the cage, and he's going to make 10% of what he had just made against Floyd Mayweather. So I think a lot of that goes into his mind and goes into his head of, you know, he's going to be ready. I think he's, you know, basically kind of saying that he's going to be ready if the fight... And the opportunity is there, he's going to take it, but the money needs to be there. Now, Connor has so many other business ventures that he's into. You know, he's got an alcohol uh, um, uh, line coming out. He's got a suit line coming out. He's got the promotion uh, the company started now. And, he, and he's got all these things that he's setting up. Now, of course, it helps his brand when you're a champion or, you know, you're only really Lost was yes, yes to Nate Diaz, but to Floyd Mayweather and all these other things. So it does, would it hurt his brand if he goes in and he fights Khabib and he just gets destroyed against Khabib? Does it hurt him? I don't really think so. I think that at this point, Conor is, is, is definitely a name, a household name. No doubt he can continue to make money in his other business ventures, whether he wins or loses. But is he a rich person? Absolutely. You know, he's got forever money that he can do whatever he wants with. I mean, unless he's living like Floyd Mayweather, who's, you know, blowing, you know, $10 million like it's nothing. Maybe that's a little bit different. Connor's not that level yet, but he is growing at such a high rate of income with these businesses that he has that he doesn't really need to fight. And I'm sure there's better opportunities for him there than having to step into the cage and get punched in the face there's easier ways to, for him to make money. But if he steps in, he wants to make sure that he's getting that, that he's getting definitely enough where it makes sense for him to go in the cage. But you look at the other side, on Khabib's side, they're kind of done with it. You know, they're kind of done with this conversation. They're kind of done with, with talking about Conor McGregor. And you hear Khabib saying that, you know, he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. He can't take those conversations because he's not even active. He's not active. So why are we talking about him? That's the Khabib side of the story saying, who cares about Conor McGregor if he's not even willing to, to put his hat up uh, into the ring and say, hey, listen, I am fighting the winner of this. I am the lightweight champion. That's the end of story. Whoever wins this, let's fight. Let's get it on. That's what I want to hear. And I think that's what Khabib is, is really alluding to when he's saying, you know, get in line kind of thing, because he's basically telling him, listen, you, you're on the sidelines. Right now, you are on the sidelines. You are not in the game right now. And, you know, he has every right to do what he's doing at this point after the buildup for Mayweather, after him moving up to fight for the lightweight title and all these things. He needs to defend his title. And that's... and. If, if you've been watching many of these podcasts, you know my feelings towards this, that he really needs to defend this title. He has to fight the winner here. I think it's a terrible look if he does not fight the winner of Khabib and Tony Ferguson. I think it's a bad look for him overall in general. But, you know, you know, Khabib is 25-0 and 0 in his career. He's 9-0 and 0 in the UFC. So he has, he's, he's done everything that he needs to do to get to this point. There's people that have ducked him. There's people that didn't fight him. Then there was, you know, obviously the weight uh, cut situation with Khabib. But the rumors and the things that we're hearing now about the fact that he is in, you know, he's, his weight is right on target where it needs to be, that he's, you know, well in shape at this point. He, and I guess, and, and, and I do say, I, I always say it's very unprofessional for guys not to make weight. This is your profession. You got to make weight. End of story. But he didn't make weight. There was other situations that they were saying, health and all these other things. Obviously, you want health is, of course, the number one priority when it comes to making weight and all, and, and at least just being healthy. You want a great product out there when the fighter's out there. You don't want him to be drained, hospitalized, trying to get fluids, and then trying to step into the cage. You don't want those kind of things. Sounds like he's in great shape right now. So all is well with at least this fight moving forward at this point. But... On the other side of it, again, what is Conor McGregor's play when it comes into this? And I think Khabib and his team take shots at him because they know he's not going to step into the ring. That's at least what they're saying. 
Um, I'm very much down the middle. And again, I've had a conversation with people in, in the comment section and, and uh, just discussing different parts of this. And, you know, I'm very down the middle. I don't know if he is just scared of Khabib or if it is the negotiating process that's going on right now for him to step into the cage again. And, and is Connor more thinking, hey, listen, if I lose, it hurts my brand, it hurts this. But at the end of the day, you are a combat athlete. That's where you really, you got your start from, is being a combat sport athlete, being an MMA champion. That is where he should hopefully come back to. I don't think him losing hurts his brand. I just would like to see him back in the cage, fighting and doing what we all want him to do is fight. We want to see one of the biggest stars in the UFC fighting again. That's it. I mean, it, you know, when you look at it, we're talking about tweets, you know, it, that's not, really, I mean, that is this day and age, of course, that's, you know, part of it because you're at least being able to communicate with, uh, or not myself communicate with them, but you can hear what they need to say on a daily basis because they can just, you know, punch it in their phone and, and millions of people can, take that information and discuss it and see where, you know, maybe they're talking about, are they hinting towards something? So, you know, there you have it. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe to this channel if you have not, because we are always talking about UFC gambling content in general. If you like that, get involved. This is Mr. UFC Vegas, Fight Club TV.